Uh, before sharing our topic today, let me introduce our speaker. Our speaker of today's live webinar, our speaker, Mr. Chong, is a lecturer and head of Department of uh, Banking and Risk Management. From the Department of Banking and Risk Management and Faculty of Business and Finance, from uh, located at Kampa campus, he obtained his Bachelor of Business Administration, uh, Bank Banking and Finance for Multimedia University, obtained his Master of uh, Business Administration, Multimedia Finance from Multimedia University. The area of expertise for Mr. Chong is financial planning. So uh, now let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Chong, for sharing today's topic. Welcome, Mr. Chong. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jolene. Uh, okay, uh, all right, thank you. Okay, and then uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the DPP department for having me here okay, to share with you uh, one of our new programs that offered by the Faculty of Business and Finance. Okay, uh, first, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, okay, the first here is that uh, we would like to bring uh, to your attention one of our new program offered by the Faculty of Business and Finance. Okay, and uh, this program is offered under the Department of the uh, Banking and Risk Management. Okay, and uh, first of all, okay, uh, the risk is uh, an uncertainty or potential threat to an organi organization. Okay, it can be a potential factor, naturally uh, affect okay, the value and the survival of a business. Okay, and hence, uh, business must understand, evaluate, and manage the risk to achieve their primary objectives okay, while keeping all the risks under reasonable control. Okay, in the time of the economic uncertainty, okay, more corporations have added risk management functions as one essential component to communicate risk policy and manage risk process within the organization. Okay, then, uh, the risk management job is one of the well-respected professions, okay, but it's yet a challenging career. Okay, if uh, one's willing to take the challenge, okay, it's indeed a rewarding career and the knowledge, skill and experience gained are transferable from one industry to the other. Okay, in view of the strong focus on risk management and heightened control by the central bank and the local authority, okay, there is a need to instill and impart risk awareness mindset among the graduates nowadays. Okay, uh, the Utah Bachelor of Business Administration Honors Risk Management okay, aimed at providing students okay, with comprehensive understanding of risk management for financial and non-financial corporations. Okay, the core curriculum of this program okay, involves analytical knowledge operation management, legal framework, and strategy planning. And more importantly, the program balanced between the need of providing students with solid theoretical knowledge, okay, but include case study that parallel to current ever shifting business environment. Okay, to discuss something further okay, that relevant to the industry and the environment, okay, uh, this will be a uh, study based on Deloitte 2020, okay, how organizations respond okay, to the risk changing nowadays. Okay, as we understand, uh, currently we are in the uh, COVID pandemic and the lockdown and the business, they have changed okay, the nature of business okay, as compared to the tradition where uh, they have the, uh, the shop and uh, they deal with customer, but now everything they have to go online. Okay, and due to this uh, changing of the business nature, then uh, in here there are a few problems okay, that are required the company attention. Okay, as for the first one, okay, we have the connective technologies augment human decision making. Okay, in here is uh, the rise of the digital economy, okay, as well as the, uh, the adoptions of the uh, AI, the artificial intelligence, as well as the Internet of Things, okay, has uh, stand the development of the business development. Okay, that's where uh, there's a new uh, branch of opportunity has established and opened up to the company to further expand okay, their business. And uh, second, okay, uh, number two is on the control become more pervasive nowadays. Okay, as compared to the uh, traditional, okay, that's where uh, there is, it might be a cause or derived from one of the, uh, the causes. But now it's uh, due to the, uh, the nature of business where uh, the whole ecosystem become part of the uh, nature of business. Okay, that's where as for company, they need to uh, consider the risk that actually may uh, arrive okay, or maybe they created from different sources from your stakeholders. Okay, rather than we focus on one sources, but now it's uh, the risk actually can come from any sources. Okay, let's say it can come from the suppliers, your customers, okay, your employee, okay, or even banker or regulator. Okay, that's why in here is company, they need to be aware and alert and need to deal with all of the stakeholders. 
And for the third, is where uh, their behavioral science inform the risk insight. Okay, our uh, issue is we have to understand on this behavioral uh, science because as compared to the past, it's where, uh, because business they deal with uh, the people and uh, we need to understand the nature of people. Okay, that's why in here also it leads to the understanding of their risk perception. And from that is actually uh, tell us okay, or deliver to us what is the, the issue that may arise okay, in the future or even in existing of the business. Okay. Then uh, number four is our business they need to be more vigilant and resilience com complement okay, prevention as a leading practice. So it here is a company they need to be uh, alert and they are ready for any uh, risk that may occur okay, or even pose to the business. Okay. As compared to the past is why uh, traditionally we don't really uh, have this kind of COVID and the lockdown in which a business they can uh, like operate their business as usual. But if you look into like the past year and up to current, it's like business, they start to change okay, in terms of their, their business or nature, their operations, or even uh, in terms of the, uh, the working environment that always started to change. Okay? Then from here is that a company that if they are ready with these kind of changes, okay, then uh, it should be okay because they, they actually uh, get ready and it helps to minimize or even mitigate okay, their risk. And the second is why okay, the company, they need to be more agile. Okay, because when dealing with these kind of changes or the sudden changes, they need to be ready to cope okay, or to adapt okay, to the environmental changes nowadays. Okay, that is one of the ways that uh, it helps the company to su survive or even to sustain okay, their assistance in the market. And for number five, okay, there is a risk transfer which broadens in the scope and the application. Okay, because as compared to the past, uh, traditionally where the company may perceive uh, the uh, risk mechanism is part of the insurance. Okay, because a risk transfer, that may be uh, one of the instruments that we can use is the, uh, the insurance. Okay, then from that, uh, it can help to lower down our risk. Okay, because uh, first, definitely, uh, the company will involve with the internal restructuring or the internal monitoring. Okay, that's help to uh, lower down their risk. Okay, or else then they can opt for this uh, transferring. Okay, whereas uh, they transfer their risk to the uh, preferred parties. Okay, let's say the uh, purchase and insurance products. Okay. okay, next, uh, further to that, okay, uh, the risk, okay, according to the Institute of the International Finance and uh, McKinsey 2017, okay, the risk actually is act as a core control, as I saying, controlling and managing the risk. Okay, as for the company nowadays, is, uh, there are few process. Okay, that's why they need to first identify what is the problem or the risk, and from that, they need to assess, okay, uh, and then to know what is uh, the issue that arises, what's impact okay, to the company. And from that, they need to look into the solution of how can we mitigate or how can we reduce the risk. Because I in here is to make sure that uh, the risk is uh, lower down to the acceptable level. And uh, also, the risk assumes more strategic role in their banking, okay, in the banks nowadays. Because uh, as compared to the past, where uh, they try to minimize the risk, and nowadays, the risk has changed, okay, the phenomenon of the business, okay, where uh, the risk become part of the decision makings. Okay, uh, in terms of like uh, to decide okay, whether they should uh, proceed with certain plan or even to start with their investment. Okay. Then uh, for the third is why okay, the risk act in a forward looking way. So rather than we look into the past, like what actually happened in the past and what we have done, okay, but now is where the risk need to do a forecasting. Okay, that means we need to predict what will happen on the, the next year or maybe the future. And from that uh, is ensure that the business are more ready and they know what to do and uh, that will definitely help okay, uh, to maintain or even uh, to uh, ensure their sustainability in the market. Okay? And also from that is offer some insight okay, for the key decision makers. Okay? As for the company, they know like, let's say, uh, they would like to invest okay, uh, to online okay, or maybe to move their business to online, then they need to evaluate what is the potential risk they might rise okay, if they move online. Right? Okay, and for the number four, okay, the risk increasingly involved in managing the non-financial risk. Because uh, if you look into the past, it's where most of the company, they are very concerned okay, with the financial risk, okay, such as like the, uh, the market risk, okay, the credit risk, okay, the default risk, and so on. Okay? But nowadays, it's where uh, the nature of big, uh, the risk have started to move okay, to the, the other aspect, which we focus more on the non-financial aspect, okay, such as the, uh, the cyber risk, okay, which is uh, relatively uh, Okay, becoming uh, more important, okay, especially in the, uh, the digital economy that we are now in. And number two, where we have this uh, geopolitical risk, okay, basically it's more on the country risk. 
Okay. And then uh, the next further to that, okay, the challenges as reported by the Institute of International Finance and Ms. King, uh, McKinsey 2017 as well. Okay, uh, for the risk manager, okay, now they are covering some of the problem. Okay, that's why uh, the legacy of the IT system and the lack of easily accessible high quality data, okay, the IT system are patchwork okay, and a degree data quality, okay, as well as a slow, de uh, slow rate of adoption of machine learning techniques okay, have become a uh, uh, restrictions okay, for the uh, company or even the manager okay, uh, to adopt okay, the risk management in their company. And a part of that, in terms of the, uh, the staff, okay, uh, the staff, risk staff, okay, we have this kind of problem where um, there are lack of up-to-date knowledge okay, of the analytic and the next generation technologies. Okay, that's why uh, they, need of this, uh, they need to incorporate with the uh, FinTech because nowadays uh, we are very popular with the FinTech, which uh, we combine the finance with the technologies of factors okay, uh, to help in uh, moving the company. Okay. And uh, in terms of the risk function, what we can do is that uh, the risk usually they actually uh, incorporate okay, in terms of the credit underwriting process, okay, the compliance, okay, the reporting, and the collateral valuations. Okay. And uh, usually this is uh, performed by the financial institution. Okay. And uh, due to this, uh, there are quite a number of skills that actually demanded by the market, okay, such as the digital skill, the analytical skill, okay, as well as the business skill. And from this, okay, uh, we would like to introduce you one of our program, okay, which is the Bachelor of Business Administration Honors Risk Management. So uh, for this program, the duration is three years for full-time students. And uh, we have three intakes, okay, which is on the uh, month of January, May, and October. And uh, for the medium instruction for this program will be in English. And uh, this program is actually uh, conducted in the Kampa Para campus okay, by the Faculty of the Business and Finance. Okay, and uh, some of the uh, more details in terms of the program structure, okay, uh, this program is a three-year program, okay, which uh, may be extended to a maximum of five years. And uh, for the general three-year program, okay, we have nine trimesters. Okay, that means uh, in one year, we have three trimesters, okay, which is a two long and one short. And for this program, it consists of a total of 120 credit hours, okay, which are the courses, consists of compulsory course, okay, the core courses, specialization courses, collective courses, where a student, they can choose from a list of their preferred course. And then we have the MPU course, which is a stand as Mata Pengajaran Umum. And then we have the research project and the industrial training. And uh, to delve further into here, okay, we have uh, the program structure. Okay, in the year one, trimester one, okay, uh, we have, let's say this business accounting one, okay, soon we'll be exposed to the accounting knowledge. And afterwards, we have also have the economic papers. And then we have the management principal paper. Okay, and then we have the uh, principal of marketing. Okay, and also we have this introduction to the probability and statistic. So you can see from here is that uh, we have the, okay, soon we'll be exposed to the knowledge of accounting, we have the economics, okay, we have the management, okay, the marketing, as well as some of the statistics which is necessary uh, in the market nowadays. And for the year one trimester two, okay, student will take an MPU one paper, and then we have the English for management, okay, as well as the principle of risk management and insurance. Okay, because uh, in year one trimester two, that will be in short time. Okay, in here is that uh, we have one MPU, uh, one of the English paper to enhance their, their English, and the third will be uh, the insurance uh, paper. And for the year one trimester three, okay, we have the national language or the other language, and also we have the English for business. And then we also have this business accounting too. Then we have introductions to business programming and also the statistical methods. So you can see from that is here, we have this accounting paper too, which is an enhanced or the advanced for the business accounting one. And also students will be introduced on some of the programming knowledge okay, that is uh, required by the, uh, the market. Okay, and at last we have this statistical method, okay, which is to enhance the analytical skill. Okay, well, for the year two, okay, year two trimester one, we have the elective one and elective two, okay, in which there's a set of the uh, courses, okay, in which they can choose uh, one of the preferred one. Okay, then also we have this core curriculum, okay, then uh, we have one of specialization, which we have this corporate ethic, fraud, and the compliance in risk management. Then uh, we have applied regression analysis. And the last, we have this introduction to occupational safety and health. Okay, from here, you can see that uh, students will be exposed to some of the fraud and compliance paper, as well as the regression, which also uh, is type of the analysis paper. 
and the last is more on the OSHA, okay, which uh, this is deemed as important, okay, especially for the operational activities. Okay, then for the year two trimester two, we have the MPU, and then we have the business and society, okay, as well as the inter enterprise risk management. Okay, because in here you can see that uh, business and society is where students will be exposed to the uh, management paper. And uh, the last will be uh, the ERP, ERM, okay, that will be uh, one of the uh, main specializations for the program. Okay, then for the year two trimester three, okay, students will learn on the time series analysis, okay, in which will help them to do some forecasting and analyze the trend, okay, and also still be exposed to the business finance, okay, the financial derivatives, okay, the credit and market risk management. Okay, then we have the legal framework of bank, banking and financial institutions, as well as the Sunzi out of work and business strategies. So from here, you can see that uh, still be exposed to some of the financial knowledge because that will definitely assist them to, uh, uh, to understand or even to analyze the financial risk. Okay, and also we look into the framework, okay, the legal framework in the banking field, okay, as well as some of the strategy paper. Okay, for the final year, okay, the year three, okay, a year three sem one student will uh, learn the elective one and elective three, okay, in which student they can choose uh, from a list of courses. Okay, then uh, they also will learn on the internal auditing for financial institutions, okay, which is a specialization paper. And also followed by the next, we have this operational risk management in financial institutions. Okay, and at last we have the research project. Okay, for research project where students, they need to uh, take a final year project, which in other words, they need to conduct a research. And this will be uh, spent through a two trimesters. So you can see that uh, in here, we have research project one, and the second one will be research project two, okay, that will be in year three, trimester three. Okay, then uh, for the year three trimester two, okay, students will undergo uh, an industrial training, okay, in which they'll be placed uh, in a company okay, to learn okay, in the hands-on, okay, especially like what they learn from the study and in here they can go for practice. Okay, and uh, for the industrial training, usually students will be attached uh, for 14 weeks, okay, for 14 weeks or about three months. Okay, then uh, for the final trimester, okay, students, uh, once they come back from their internship, Okay, then uh, they will take okay, the crisis communication in public relations. Okay, then we have this financial statement analysis. Okay, then we have international finance. Okay, uh, and also uh, we need to follow up with this research project. Okay, that's part two. And the last will be the strategy management and project. So from here, there are some communication paper and some of the uh, finance paper, okay, as well as some of the strategy paper. Okay, that, will, uh, that will help to assist them uh, to understand the whole nature Okay, of this uh, business, okay, the finance, uh, as well as some of the analytical, as well as the programming skill. And next one. Okay, uh, in terms of the collaborations, uh, industry or the university partners, okay, uh, the companies or corporates which having collaborations uh, with uh, the faculty and the Utah, okay, we have the uh, ICLI, okay, in terms of the economic cooperation. And then second, we have the CFA Institute, okay, which is a CFA Institute Investment Foundation Program and formerly known as Caritas Investment Certificate Program. And for the third, also we have the Malaysian Association of Company Secretaries, UMAX. And number four, we have the Malaysian Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, KMISA, in terms of uh, collaborative costs. And number five, we have Financial Planning Association of Malaysia, FPAM, that's in terms of the education provider. And the last, uh, we have the CTBC Financial Management College from Taiwan, in terms of the economic collaboration. And uh, okay, the next one, uh, in terms of the career prospect or the job opportunity, because uh, I think most of, most of students, they, they will start uh, to, uh, to be more okay, interested okay, in terms of after the completion of this program, what can I do or what I can be? So uh, this is to name some of them, but it's definitely not limited to the list here. Okay, for example, uh, after they have completed this uh, program, okay, what they can be is uh, they can be a risk management executive, manager, or the specialist. And second, uh, they can also be a risk analyst, and then the third, uh, they can be a risk control consultant, okay, or even the business risk manager. Okay, and then uh, the next, we have the compliance or the credit analyst. And the last, we have credit risk management executive. Okay, but uh, definitely, the list is not uh, limited to this. Okay, uh, in terms of the facility and equipment, because some of the, uh, the students, uh, they are more interested okay, with uh, the services that is offered. Okay, in here is uh, the total book collections for the program okay, that's available. Okay, uh, total titles, we have uh, 13,406 and total volume will be 25,750. Okay, that's in the Utah uh, library. Okay, then uh, second, we have the total title 10,366 and the total volume of 16,450 in the main library. 
it with the ebooks of uh, 3,457, okay, in which a student they can access to the library and from that they can uh, review on all this book. And now in terms of the research tool that is available for our students, okay, uh, basically we have this Bloomberg terminals or the Bloomberg database. And also we have the journal citation report and the Scorpus database for them uh, to search for the articles okay, or even to uh, extend okay, for their research. And now for number three, okay, uh, we have 12 computer lab, okay, which uh, consists of 442 computers okay, and uh, 24 printers, okay, which a student uh, they can access to the content reader or even to facilitate in, terms in their learnings. And uh, number four, for the Wi-Fi information, we have 52 uh, hotspots okay, in the uh, Kampa campus, okay, which uh, students, they can easily connect it to the internet and to, to access to all the learning materials. Okay. Then uh, for number five, uh, in terms of the software used for this program, okay, our students uh, will actually use the SPSS version 16. We have the eView tank, okay, the Python, as well as the Anaconda 3.7. Okay, the Python and Anaconda is a type of the programming software. Okay, which a student will be exposed to this uh, software as well. Okay, and then, uh, next one, we have the uh, student development. Okay, uh, in here is that uh, there's some activities that students actually can participate. Okay, the first one, we have the student participation. Okay, uh, as for example, we have this InterVarsity Corporate Strategy Challenge 2021. Okay, then uh, also we have this fifth international vision seminars okay, of Gropsint Business School. Okay, and uh, second, okay, in terms of student mobility program, okay, which student they can apply for a study tour or even a student exchange program with our partner university. Okay, then uh, for the third, okay, student also can expose to some of the community project. Okay, let's say they can visit the old folk house okay, and uh, they even can go for Gotong Royal and so on. Okay, that's where a student they can uh, provide okay, the uh, community service okay, to the surrounding. And uh, the number four, okay, there are society event, okay, uh, which students uh, they can join okay, the club or society that's available in the other uh, campus. And uh, to list you two here, we have the cost base, which is a Utah Banking and Finance Society, as well as the Utah Finance and Investment Society. Okay, this uh, two cost based society which students they can join. Okay, but apart of that, uh, there are also quite numbers okay, of society and club that's available to students. Okay. And uh, the last, we have this alumni achievement okay, uh, where uh, there is a list okay, of the, uh, the past students okay, and actually uh, they're doing well okay, in, the, in the market. Very interested with the salary skill. Once uh, we have completed these, okay, what uh, sh should I be earning okay, from, from this uh, so-called big program? So uh, from our research in the market, okay, as a risk manager, okay, uh, we obtain sources like, let's say the pay skill. Okay, on average, uh, the risk manager, they are earning about like 7,300. Okay, and uh, for the second sources where you extract from the salary explorer, our okay, risk manager, okay, they earn around the range of 3,600 okay, to up to 11,000. And uh, the third sources from the job street, okay, a student, uh, the risk manager are earning about like 6,600 up to the 8,000 range. Okay, but uh, that maybe is one of the, uh, the benchmark okay, that we can use uh, for our students as well. And uh, okay, in terms of the scholarship and the financial aid, okay, because uh, we understand some of the, uh, the students, okay, they have uh, limited okay, or maybe in need okay, of the financing. So uh, in here, we have uh, six types of the uh, scholarship okay, uh, and the financial aid, okay, in which we have this internal foundation scholarship. We also offer the internal undergrad scholarship. And then third, we have this internal study loan. Okay, and uh, we also have the external scholarship, external loan, and the PTPTN that's available for the application. And for further details, okay, you can refer to the Division of Exam Award and Scholarship, okay, the DES, for more information. Okay, I think uh, that's all. Okay, uh, basically, if you need further information, uh, you can contact me, uh, Mr. Chong. Uh, my email is chongtp at utah.edu.my. Okay, or if you need uh, further information, also you can refer to the Division of Promo Program Promotions. Okay, formation student, you can email to inquiry at utah.edu.my. And for the international student, uh, you can email to international at utah.edu.my. All right. And okay, then uh, let's make Bachelor of Business Administration honors risk management as your education choice. Yeah, I think that's all from me. Here is the barcode for our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel. You may look back to the previous webinar and get the latest information from our uh, Facebook page, Utah for you. Last but not least, today's webinar will be recorded at our official Facebook page, Utah for You, and also will upload it to our YouTube channel. Uh, for further inquiry, you may WeChat, WhatsApp, or Facebook us. Thank you for joining us today and have a nice day.